Hi. I guess we'll, we'll get started a couple minutes early. We'll have more time for questions at the end or coffee break. Um, I'm Mikhail Marin, and the goal I had with this talk really was to explore some of the things that, in my experience with OpenStreetMap over the past eight years, the kinds of things which have come up, the kinds of things I want to see more of in OpenStreetMap, and particularly in the OpenStreetMap website. And I'm coming from it from a, a kind of a different perspective than Salmon, because a long time I'm not a designer, but I have a lot of experience. And I'm glad he did such a great presentation because it makes my job easier of convincing all of you that what I want is also what you want. And to start about talking about social, I mean OpenStreetMap itself is an essentially a social project. That's what makes it distinctive from other um, mapping projects from other kinds of uh, collection of mapping data. We're a community of people who care extremely deeply about the data that we collect and, and the, what, the work that we do. And one of the early things which happened in the OpenStreetMap project is this idea of having a mapping party, of actually coming together and having a good time doing surveying, which traditionally was a really, really tough job that was a, a chore. Somehow the main trick, this big trick of OpenStreetMap is that surveying is now something we do for fun in our spare time because we like to do it. And we do it with other people and often there are drinks involved. So back in 2006, um, I met Steve Coast and another guy named Ben Russell, uh, Tom Cardin was involved and this idea of a mapping party came about. Um, and Isle of Wight is an island off the southern coast of England. I was living there at the time. And we had this audacious project, right, to map the entire world uh, you know, by walking with GPS units. Hard to demonstrate you know, that that's possible, but the Isle of Wight was an island which possibly in a single weekend, two dozen people could map it entirely. So that's what we set out to do. And this is how it was kicked off. A message on the talk was from Steve saying that would be a great idea, let's rent a cottage, um, we'll all go down to the Isle of Wight. We put together a wiki page, and um, that's how we organized. This was the first time actually a lot of us had met each other in person, and it really kind of set the precedent for a lot of the social activities that happen around OpenStreetMap and the ways we try to connect. Um, this is probably a familiar diagram from anyone who's been to a mapping party. This is, you know, slicing up the cake. I don't know if this was the first time it was done, but that's the Isle of Wight, and we just divided up um, and put our names in the areas that we wanted to map. I was on my bike, so I, I mapped on that sea view. And back then, we actually walked every single, or biked or drove every single road and, and uh, every single path. We didn't have satellite imagery that we could we can make use of to trace. So we were literally planning to walk every single road in the entire world. Um, thankfully, we don't need to do that anymore, though it was really exciting, kind of interesting thing to do for a while. Um, I myself walked every street in, or biked every street in a Brighton, England, and I saw things I never would have had seen otherwise. Some of them were amazing, some of them were incredibly boring, but it was a good experience, and so there we are out in the world with GPS units. And this is also kind of a familiar diagram. This, we took all of our GPS traces, loaded it into, that was JOSM back in 2006, not looking too different, but I don't think there was a right side panel. Yeah. And just, that's a collective GPS traces without any editing at all. It's a map of, of the Isle White. And this render of an Isle White, it actually looks pretty good, but this, this was done with a tool called Osma Render, which was basically a XML style sheet to transform OpenStreetMap XML into SVG. And then you could load it in Inkscape, and then you get a output a map like this. So essentially, what I'm trying to say is the distinctive thing about OpenStreetMap is social. However, you know, if we look at our tools, the tools that we use, this is the original editor for, uh, called OpenStreet, OSM Editor. Um, we were mostly collecting roads back then. Um, you draw draw lines over GPS traces, that's Landsat in the background, so those brown smudges are streets and the green smudges are like trees. 
and and that's what we that's what we used. We've come a long way, obviously. Uh, Artem had a, a screenshot of this. I couldn't even find any screenshots. I had to take a screenshot of a screenshot from a talk uh, from Steve Coast's introduction to the first state of the map, and that's what you know. Actually, you can see the website doesn't look too dissimilar. Uh, we, we designed that back in 2006 in a pub on the back of a napkin based on Wikipedia. Um, we had ads. I don't know who received the money for those, but uh, um, maybe they went towards the server. But you can see, we had a, there was a Ruby script which actually drew white lines over Landsat. And it was always breaking, and it, it caused me a lot of headaches. And of course, now we have, we have, uh, we have Mapnik, and it updates within minutes, and it's wonderful. So uh, this was the way that the first state of the map was announced on the talk list by Steve Coast. We, that was in Manchester in 2007. Uh, this was the way that state of the map US 2013 was announced. Now, of, of course, you know, there's a wonderful website. There's all sorts of social media channels, lots of ways that the word gets out. But this is still like maybe the primary way that we organize ourselves socially as a community is through mailing lists. And there's nothing wrong with mailing lists. There's a lot of great things that happen on the mailing list. But for a community of, well, we have over 1 million registered users, but maybe our community is in the tens of thousands, um, it's hard to organize by mailing list. So my main point here is that OpenStreetMap has changed a lot, but the way that we socialize hasn't really changed. And primarily, we're, you know, in a way, a social project. So this is a, a story. Um, I often get asked, I've done a lot of mapping in lots of weird places, so I often get asked, is there a mapping community in this place? And sometimes I know, sometimes I, I've met the people who are involved in that, that community so I can direct them to the, ex, you know, to the people who are top mappers. Sometimes I don't. So in February, um, I was asked, is there a mapping community in Jordan? And uh, it turns out that I had, I've been to Jordan before. And um, back in 2007, 2008, immediately following the second state of the map in Limerick, it was my first kind of like overseas weird place mapping experience. And we went to Amman, and the idea was to do OpenStreetMap in, uh, in Jordan. And one of our first meetings was with the National Mapping Agency, which in Jordan, as it used to be in many places, is an arm of the military. So in walked uh, three colonels in full military regalia to talk about OpenStreetMap. And the main thing they wanted to talk about was the map key. And it's a little bit obscured, but if you look at the map key, uh, right under Nature Reserve is military area. And they were very interested in which military areas we were going to map and who wanted to know about them and what our connections were to Israeli intelligence. <laughs> uh, so that didn't go so well. Um, and we, we basically had to leave, but before, before I, uh, we left, I did ask, you know, maybe you have great data, maybe you can share it with us. And this is way before open data movement at all. And so I actually brought some physical objects just because I found them, it, found them here in San Francisco and I thought I'd share them. Um, so th this was open data according to the Royal Jordanian Geographic Center in 2008. So he's, he's like, oh, you want, you want map data? You want maps of all of Jordan? I'm like, yeah, totally. So they, like 10 minutes later, they come back with this fat packet of maps, and they're like these really just, uh, yeah, they're like these just terribly designed tourist maps of Jordan. <laughs> I'm like, these are you. And they're like, oh, now you have your maps, young man. <laughs> yeah, so oh, this is open data in Jordan still. Um, and anyway, yeah, there wasn't much mapping community in Jordan, and there's, there, there actually still isn't. Whatever. Um, but I tried to answer the question. Um, and I've done this a few times, so there's, I know, I, there's a few places I go. The first place I go, oh, well, I go to the history tab. I go to, to Amman, and oh, who's been editing lately in Amman? Well, you all recognize that perhaps the, the yellow block of death of big change sets over an area and I paged through maybe like three, four, five pages, got really tired of looking at all these big chain sets. There hadn't been any local activity in Amman recently. This, this page should show smaller boxes showing where people had edited, but 
because all of these global chain sets overlay this monitor the way the chain set history works in the OpenStreetMap website, you get these, these yellow box of death. So this was useless. Now there's a great new tool in development called OWL, the, the OpenStreetMap watch list, which I happen to know about because I'm pretty involved. There's not like a link to it from the history page saying maybe if this isn't working for you, check this out. But um, yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, there's recent activity. It shows exactly only stuff that happens over Amman. And actually found the thing that you have to, f to figure out in, in, uh, like in developing countries often, are they local or are they mappers in, you know, at home or did they go on vacation and do some mapping? Because you're trying to find the local community, people to connect with locally to do something with. And so it's always a bit of like a, you have to kind of do a bit of an investigation. So I looked at, there's one change set which kind of caught my eye because it had the name of places and it looked like a good candidate for a local mapper. So that his name was Ashakat. So I clicked on his user. There's a link here to this user profile. And I got this. Well, the user Ashakat does not exist. Well, this really stumped me for a while until I went back to Owl and it turned out that like a couple months later, he changed his username to Abdallah Ishikat. So he decided to come fully out with his full name. Um, so that's a bug in OWL. If anyone has GitHub open, you can file a, tra uh, you know, file a ticket. But um, that took a while to fill out. So then I had the user. I could send him a message through the OpenStreetMap website, and maybe he'll get back to me saying, yes, I'm an active user. I'd love to get involved. I never heard back from him. Another place we, we often go to is uh, Edo. Uh, Edo has done a lot of work with OpenStreetMap data, and a tool they've had for a long time is called the Edo Mapper. So you can define an area. This is, again, Amon. And then it generates statistics and visualizations about who's been active there. So this is showing for all the like, streets in Amon who are the most recent editors. And that big, so they're, in the, they're each assigned a color. And that big red, there's one editor there, um, editor Leaks. Leaks. He's 27,000 ways. Wow. Wow, so maybe he's a local. So I clicked on his user profile. Well, first I looked at his chain sets to get a sense, is he local or not? No, he's a worldwide mapper. He's great. He's doing a lot of great work, but he's not, doesn't look like he's in Jordan. Click on his user profile. OK, that, that gentleman does not look Jordanian. Um, uh, he, hap he happens to be in the audience here we just met. Uh, so w welcome. We am, I am I pronouncing leaks correctly? Leaks, or how do you pronounce it? Leaks? OK. So great. And, oh, well, so here's, you know, Salmon showed this, you know, the profile page. Pretty blank. And in fact, his, his profile doesn't even, like, just tell anything about him. He says, just go to this other place. <laughs> See my wiki user. You're my what? So you go to, his, you go to Leaks' wiki user page, and ah, it tells a lot about him, actually. It describes him. It actually confirms that he's categorized as he's a user in Germany user in, in a part of Germany. And um, it's interesting, it has badges. He participated in a, a mapping event called Operation Cowboy. It says that he's multilingual, he speaks Arabic. That explains why he was ma mapping in, in Amman. He was visiting there, in fact. Um, and so this is all good stuff, but I still haven't found the local community. Um, there's a new plugin, recent plugin for JASM called GeoChat. So I went to Amman. Typed in the geo. It, it basically it, it allows you to chat with, with people who are editing nearby you, in the same place. Uh, Hi, anyone editing in Amman? And didn't hear anybody editing in Amman. Uh, overview of OpenStreetMap contributors. This is a tool that, that Pascal Nias has put together. He analyzes um, OpenStreetMap chain sets in order to deduce a person's center of activity, like the place where they do the most editing. Um, the issue is that a lot of us have more than one center. I certainly have. If, if you look at my center of activity, it's in Kenya, in Nairobi, which is certainly a place I'm pretty tied to, but I live in DC, and that's probably where you're, you'll catch me as a local mapper. Um, but, you know, pretty good. So then they're colored differently depending on the experience level. So the red are kind of, they're called non-recurring. They're like hit and run map. They've come in once, they've edited, and then they've left. Um, green are senior mappers. Just they're, exp they're more experienced. They've edited more. So that looks promising. And it links to how did you contribute, which Sam also showed. 
And well, funny, funny enough, he's here. I can't. I don't know if you can read it, but it's a, he's a. Uh, this user is a casual mapper here. Here he's a senior. He's a senior casual mapper somehow by definition, um, and it shows that it, you know it's great. I love this. I love this page, and I love the stats that it produces. But it turns out he's one of those people who he has multiple centers. So this is just one place where he's actually. He doesn't live in Amman. So the other thing you can do to find local people is if you, you set your location in your profile, right? And then on your profile page, it has a little map and it shows these are the people who are around you. Um, you can't go to someplace else and like, I, so I'm in DC, shows, I can't then just like browse the map to Amon and say, hey, who's over here in Amon? So what I have to do is go into my settings, change my home location to Amon, and that's, not, that's hard because you can't zoom in and out on this map. So you have to like cut and paste the latitude and longitude, and then, okay, now I'm in Amman, and then, okay, here's a, here's a bunch of people who have said they are in Amman. Oh, this looks pretty good. And so then I send out a bunch of, you know, email, you know, uh, yeah, messages to them, and they don't respond. Finally, you can look on the wiki, and if you find a wiki project was appropriate for the pay place, here there's um, a list of active, an active mapper in, in Jordan. I like that it's singular. Is um, <laughs> so it's a user snow crash, and somehow I figured out that that snow crash on the wiki is cabal. On I can't remember how I figured that out, and then I sent him a message, and he says I don't live there anymore. <laughs> so, you know, I know all of these tools, you know, and so I can find my way around them. It didn't work in the case of Jordan because, well, there's not a, there's not a community there, but. I mean, I find that I know I know all these tools, but I find them a real pain to use and figure out. And I think they could be done, could be done a lot easier. And if you are a newcomer, you know, not everyone knows to ask me or to ask you guys. You know, is there is, are there mappers here? If you're new, how do you find the other people who are around you in mapping? There's no sense that this is from the website experience. There's no sense that this is a community that you can connect to. Um, what other tools do we use to socialize? Well, mailing list forums, social media, blah, blah, blah. Um, we have our profiles, the user profile. I like the diary feature a lot. I use it a lot. It's a great way to kind of um, talk and build, build community in, the, in the, the, the website. And then the stats sites, I think, are great for profiles. How did you contribute? Um, Richard Weed has also done something called the OSM user stats suite. It has like baseball cards. So there's some cool stuff out there for profiles. For activity, it's all over the place, history tab. There's OWL, there's Altogether Lost has a couple things where you can like, you can have like two mappers competing, you enter two and like who, who's, the best, who's the more active mapper. Edo map. Um, the OSM weekly summary, that's nothing to do with like who's mapping where, but I, I love the, the, on the OpenStreetMap blog, it's just a great way of finding out what's going on. Um, the wiki calendar, I, can't believe anyone actually uses that to find out anything that's going on. Apparently, some people find it useful because events go seem to seem to pop up there. And then uh, meeting together. I mean, physically getting together. We have state of the map conferences. We have mapping parties. Um, well, that's that's the first state of the map. Um, that's Steve, an unflattering picture of Steve talking about Google tiles or whatever. And uh, we have editathons and mapathons, whatever the difference is between those two. And Hack weekends in, in Nairobi, in, in the slums, they have community forums. It's very serious business there. They don't have mapping parties. It's a community forum. And conferences. So we've, I don't know how many conferences Steve has spoken at or any, you know, all of us have spoken at. I've spoken at tons uh, just promoting OpenStreetMap, and that's how it, how it continues to work, and that's great. Um, but I do think the tools can be better. Yeah, uh, I was just being fair to Steve here with an unflattering picture of myself being evil, talking about how OpenStreetMap website should also be more like Facebook. Um, I'm serious. Uh, I mean, you have a profile, you have a news feed, you have groups or places, and, and events. And uh, there's lots of reasons not to like Facebook. If you don't like Facebook, please don't like Talk, oh, well, we don't want to be more like Facebook. No, I'm not suggesting putting a back door into OpenStreetMap. I'm just saying that it's a quick way for us to think about the kinds of things which might be cool. So I've kind of hacked around on this on the, on the main website, and, um, and Tom H. has been kind enough to push out some of my 
my changes. Um, one of the first things I tried was uh, friends' diaries. So there's this friending feature. And until I did this, it did absolutely nothing, except if you go to someone's profile page, it shows that they're your friend, which is nice. But like, what function does it have? How do you connect to your friends? So there's just a list of your friends. So this basically filters diary entries by only the people that you friended. So you can keep track of what they're going on, what they're doing. It does the same for change sets. And then for nearby users, also filters uh, diary entries and change sets. Um, so that was pretty straightforward to implement. I'm not sure how it does performance-wise. If you page through a few, it kind of slows down. And then something I've, been ex I've experimented with, but um, we'll, see, we'll see if it, it gets pushed out, is within diary entries actually linking directly to OpenStreetMap objects. So I like to be able to, like, if I, I went to this mapping party at this place, and so it actually you know, draws dots. Just by providing the link in the body of the message, it puts a map up and it draws, you know, draws that park and draws dots. So these are kind of the experiments I've been doing to try to see, can we make the platform more social? And I think, I think Salmon did an amazing job of like visualizing what that might look like. Um, and I'm not a designer, so I have a bunch of slides now which are just text. And I'm thinking more about like, well, great if you have that design, but how do you support it from a technical architecture? And this is very, very hand wavy. Um, this is our current, you know, architecture for OpenStreetMap. And there it is. There's a big box there next to Planet Dump called Etc. So there's a Planet Dump and all sorts of Etc happens. And then there's the OpenStreetMap website up there. So my, yeah, here's my big brainwave. We connect the Etc to some whizzy bang thing, and then it goes into the website. And, that we, and this is like around social and groups and, and activity. So let's call it OSM to stats or something. It basically analyzes the change sets and other activity on the site, like new user joins and new groups and diary entries. For the profile, for doing stats on the profile, I think it's actually pretty manageable and doable right now without like major thinking about architecture and stuff. You, do, you have to do one time, like, look through all the history. That's going to take a while, but you just do it once. And then from the OSC, every time there's an update, you update that user stat. What are we at? We're at 20,000 per month. Even if that you know, went up to 100,000 per month, I think that's pretty doable as far as a, you know, stats turning. I think it's manageable. And then you look for interesting activity, maybe as a next step. Um, it would be cool. Celebrate someone's OSM birthday, you know, their rebirth as a mapper. On Facebook, you have a regular birthday. In OpenStreetMap, you have your OSM birthday when you first joined, or your first edit in a new place, first edit here in Mission Bay, your first taqueria, or you attended an event, like State of the Map. It would be great to have that like, as a kind of a badge, or you threw a mapping party in Congo, as we do. And so how do you, you do that stats processing, and then this is, a tiny, this is like some tiny JSON just actually taking taking Alex's um, how did you contribute stats, putting it into a JSON format. This WYSIBank uh, server that does the stats analysis produces JSON that can get then read in by the front end of the website and does all the, the beautiful stuff that, that Sam uh, showed us. The activity feed, yeah, this is a bit harder, right? I mean, it gets combinatorial. Um, so based on your friends and your groups, you look at, you know, for all the things that you're interested in, everything that happens, you have to check whether it's something that's interesting to you. Now, um, you know, so we're basically, how do you construct social media feeds? I'm sure someone at this conference has done this for a startup in, you know, in, here in San Francisco. It's, it's probably a solved problem with sufficient hardware and processing. Um, I don't know exactly how to do it, but we can figure this out with a little more work. The thing, uh, events, I think, are a really interesting thing to bring into the OpenStreetMap website. So what do we do a lot? We hold a mapping party. We take a before picture. We take an after picture. And then we try to do some statistics around what's, what happened, who contributed. Let's just do this automatically. So you define an event in the OpenStreetMap website. Um, it takes a, grabs a before shot. Um, other people can join the event. It automatically does some basic statistics about who contributed and what they contributed. And it keeps you connected after the event. So everyone who attended that, that mapping party or that edit-a-thon, it shows on their profile. And you can, talk, you can continue to, if you have another event, you can say, come along. 
And yeah, this is a bunch of, um, yeah, sorry, 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 Tom, for making Big look so awful um, with all this text. But uh, um, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you do a DB structure for stats, which is flexible enough to do all the things we might want to do with stats? Um, how do you manage groups and places? What is kind of like the permissions model? Can anyone create a place and 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 join? And but what if you have overlapping places? How do you garden them? And then what kind of social feed infrastructures can we crib? Um, I had something else I wanted to show you guys just for no reason at all. I mean, it's kind of related, but just showing like the kinds of things we, we used to do, or I've, I have done, just old maps. So after I, yeah, this is the first, this is a poster from the first time I talked about hot, like outside of OpenStreetMap. And it's a lesson on not using duct tape as a way of connecting to large prints. So there's hot. Our first activation was in Gaza. So this was from 2008. I was supposed to show this earlier when I had Steve's slide. Um, and then this, this is a poster from when we finished Brighton from after I biked every single road in Brighton. It's like, let's have a party. So this was done with uh, Etienne, he came over and we styled. I think, I think Richard helped out with the, the graphics, with the, with the layout, and yeah. So, that's Brighton. And we all, put, we all came together for that. So just to summarize, OpenStreetMap is social. You agree, yes, OK. <laughs> Our core, our, our core tools really haven't changed, and they're, but there are some good experiments out there, but it's, you have to know where they are, and they're kind of fragmented, and they don't really work entirely. But we have really good work on design so far, just a few days of, of experimenting. Uh, a lot of very smart people here who are familiar with how to build you know, scalable websites. So yeah, let's, let's do it. We have the... We have the sprint day on Monday. I think it's a perfect time to, to uh, move with that momentum. Tomorrow, uh, there are, one, there's the BOF at lunch, I believe. And two, there's a set of talks on community um, in the afternoon. Um, particularly, Martin's talking about groups in more detail. Um, so if you're interested in the topic, make sure to catch those things uh, tomorrow. Thanks. Um, I guess we take some questions. Yes. Oh. Yeah, um, the question was, is, you know, was the list of all of the tools for finding people, is, do I have that somewhere? I'll put the presentation online, and I'll, I'll send, I'll, I'll, like, tweet it out, and then there's also a blog post which covers a lot of the same topics. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, one thing we were thinking about with the diary entries, for instance, in, in GitHub, there's, you can write comments, and there's like this markdown, this GitHub markdown. So there's ways of like easily referring to issues and other projects in markdown. So maybe with this diary entry thing, it was like we could have a markdown flavor, OpenStreetMap flavored markdown. It was Alex's uh, suggestion. So yeah, there's there's definitely lots to be inspired by. Yeah, so, the, I, so the, he's expressing his frustration, and if he wants to organize a mapping party in a place, he'd, you know, the best thing he'd, he, he would like to see is you can define an area and then send out a message to all those people that there's a mapping party happening. Um, there's, a lot of dis there's been a lot of discussion within the OpenStreetMap community about me you know, email and messaging, and um, I think we have to be aware of that. But that's kind of, I think, um, 
what, what we're kind of thinking about with the groups concept is here's a way that people can opt into that. Right. Right, yeah, totally, especially if you see someone new sign up and, I mean, in D.C., where I live, there's tons of people who've signed up and say they're in D.C., but, you know, the core of, there's a map, there's a few different kind of mapping clusters, I mean, there's, I know most, of, you know, we're good, there's a good 50, 100 people, but I'm sure there's like a few hundred more people who are, would be very interested, so it'd be great to be able to promote more within the platform. So the comment, I guess, is around how if, if there is an event, if there's some activity, if there's something happening, how do you how do you um, continually kind of connect people so they can follow the progress along? I think that's some of the idea around events. Um, the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team, we've been work like this is a common sort of uh, model of like there's a focused event, and we have a tool called the Tasking uh, Manager where you can go in and you can click on a grid square and then do some editing in a defined area, it's supposed to be some 30 minutes or less. And um, then you see like the grid square sort of fill up over time. And it's, it's a little more geeky than I'd want, you know, um, but it, it works for doing the humanitarian mapping. So maybe some, th some elements of that could, could start to come in. So the question was, uh, again, inspiration from GitHub. Um, there's really good separation of interest. So if you're interested in particular projects, those are the only ones that you, you get notified about and you can have conversations within the spaces. In OpenStreetMap, which is a global project, and there's, you know, it's one global world, how do you, need, how do you focus a, attention just to those places that you're interested in or the topics that you're interested in? And that's a, I mean, that's a really good question how you actually, the user design around that. I mean, we do have sort of natural, you know, cities ha are like a, a natural kind of container, it seems, um, and also countries. And so I would, would not be surprised to see that replicated, but how you would design that and kind of a, what the model for that would be within the application, I'm not quite sure if you're just like drawing a bunch of bounding boxes all over the world and say, I'm interested in this bounding box. I mean, then you have other in interests like, like with hot or maybe you're interested in post boxes like there's a community of people all over the world who are just who map post boxes they should be they should just be able to talk to each other about that right so there's also thematic um, sort of groupings that I can imagine but I don't have any answers maybe maybe Jeff has it yeah So um, have you already given the GeoGit talk, or is that tomorrow? So Jeff will be talking. 
Jeff will be talking about GeoGit, which is exactly taking the model of, of, uh, of Git for managing code and applying it to geographic data and showing how that could, could connect to, to open, or showing it connecting to OpenStreetMap, in fact. So perhaps we shall see. You're clapping. Are we done? Okay. Thanks very much. <laughs>